Welcome to the only color-driven call-in show for USC football fans on a very black Sunday uh, coming in. A lot happened last night, a lot of emotion out there on the post-game show. We knew that it was time again for uh, another uh, Trojan family therapy session with you guys. Uh, tonight, or t- sorry, today, we will be discussing everything, every topic's on the table, whatever you guys, this is about you. We want you guys to drive the show. What questions do you have? What rants do you have? What concerns do you have going forward? So with me always is Matt Zemek. Uh, We both watched the game last night, Matt. And, uh, you know, we we both have our takes. Any just quick takes off the top you want to cover really quickly before you open up to callers? Fire Grinch, Fire Wiley. That was succinct. I couldn't even take the call fast enough. Uh, so right away, boom, I knew it was going to be hot tonight or today. God, I keep saying tonight. Uh, today, uh, we have our first caller. Uh, caller, what's your name? Where are you from? Who could it be other than Mr. Avery? What's up, guys? How you doing? In traditional fashion, the first <laughs> caller. Let's go. What's what's up, Avery? I know you're gonna have a couple takes right off the bat. What's what's the one to, what's the one thing you have to get your chest right away? Oh, first off, first off, when should we fire Grinch? I want to answer the question on that one. Are we firing him right away, or are we gonna wait till the end of the season? I, I told you the first game of the season. It had to been then because it had to have been then because you practiced all all season. And this is what you produced the first game. And just I don't care what type of coach speak they gave us for the next nine weeks, the same thing we saw, the very same thing we saw, defensive ends covering, running backs in the open, and all this, this nonsense we've seen it manifest to, to, to nonsense. To, 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 I mean, we've seen it, man. Um, something has to be done immediately because I remember Carter. Carter alluding two weeks ago like, man, you got to get a defensive philosophy going because somebody, the kids want to stay home, but we're not, we're, we're not helping them. We're not helping ourselves. Um, it's just, I can't believe it. I, I've kind of, I'm not going to say I've lost interest, but I've, um, I started doing more reading. Well, I like a lot of Matt takes on, uh, on the, uh, online. I just started doing more reading and he follows the team like that. Man, Cause it's just like, you, you know what you're going to see, right? Like the definition of insanity is just in the bag. Right? <laughs> yeah, listen, I, I I think I've almost scarred my heart to the point, you know, because I've been I went through the Hackett and Hilton years, so this, this I've got a, I've got a lot of scar tissue built up around here, so I could I could handle seasons like this. Believe me, it, it's been rough, and I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you, uh, you know, going to the Coliseum and sitting there like I've done for decades and watching this offense give one of the best performance I've ever seen by an offense, you know, in that Coliseum, and then to walk away with a with an L. Uh, it is really, really difficult. And to see it time and time again, the Utah game, a game that the offense locked up the win for the defense, they just got to make a stop, you know, like one stop or just slow them down. You know, they only had a minute and change. Just slow them down. Uh, and they couldn't do it either. This defense definitely is not a lack of heart. I will tell you that. I believe that. You can see these players' faces. It's not a lack of effort because they are making effort out there. It just seems like it's not working. And Avery, kudos to you. You saw a lot earlier than me. Um, you know, Matt, any thoughts really quick? I mean, you know, a simple pitch play was gashing this defense for, you know, 30, 40, 50 yards, you know, from start to finish. Like they just couldn't defend a simple pitch running play to the outside. So, you know, DeBoer would go left, DeBoer would go right. And they'd be out of positions. Like there, there is just not much left to say. And I think you know USC fans should be angry, but like this is just a continuation of what we've seen for quite a long time, far too long a time. And the one, the one really good thing about this, like it's it's bad to to just drink all of this in. But the one really good thing, there's zero debate now. Zero ambiguity zero confusion zero possibility that grinch stays on like like th- this knocked it dead it's done it's over and I'm just for anyone who says oh lincoln Riley's gonna stick with Ash grinch no he can't like 
and things come to an end like when when a when a, a criminal gets sloppy and he gets caught in the act like he finally will go to jail no one thought he would go to jail but he finally does a politician gets caught in in bed with a with a either a dead girl or a live boy as a former louisiana governor once said uh like his career's over like there there are certain moments when even the things that you think are going to last forever they come to an end and the lincoln riley alex grinch marriage is done it's going to be done at some point in the next two weeks might not be today or tomorrow but it's but november 19 after the season finale against ucla because usc's not going to play in the Pac-12 championship game on December 1st, November 18 is the end of the regular season. It's the last game before the Bulls by November 19, maybe November 20, if they want to drag it out just a little bit, uh, Alex Grinch will no longer be employed at USC. And for people who think, oh, look at what, he's going to stick by him. No, this is the end. And Saturday made it absolutely clear. There, there is no going back. The Rubicon has been crossed. Like no serious person can say, oh, Lincoln Riley's, not only is Lincoln Riley going to be able to fight for Grinch, that that might be true. I doubt it. But even if it is true, Jen Cohen can look at this and say, no, Lincoln, you don't get to do this. Like, like Iowa's uh, athletic director told Kirk Ferentz, who's been on the job for nearly a quarter of a century, no, you don't get to keep Brian Ferentz as your offensive coordinator. Like, you know, there are adults who can see when things are just so bad for so long, so consistently, someone's going to step in. So even if Rinkin Riley still has that thought that he can retain Grinch, Jen Cohen, who, by the way, used to be the athletic director at the University of Washington. So like this game certainly made her aware of, you know, what happens when you have a bad coordinator. She had that with Jimmy Lake hiring John Donovan, the disastrous offensive coordinator who basically took down what Chris Peterson had built. Jen Cohen will make sure, trust me, that if Lincoln Riley has any slight inclinations of keeping Grinch, she is going to shut it down. So trust me, folks, this is over. This is done. Saturday made it yeah. so clear that no one, not one soul can logically debate otherwise. No, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say that this, the way this has gone down this season, I don't think there's any debate that Grinch could have for Lincoln for today. Hey, dude, come on, give me one more chance. You know, we're so close. We're right there. We're one play away. We're not. We're clearly not one play away. Uh, I think this is the, was, you know, as horrible as the season was for, you know, for your guys, your seniors, and your draft eligible juniors. Uh, this was absolutely the moment where it's going to be ripping the bandaid off of, of this relationship as far as head coach and DS coordinator goes um and i think it's a way to keep their friendship intact because let's face it it just didn't get done riley can turn to him and say i've lost my entire fan base you know i'm 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 losing games i'm i'm wrecking the season for guys like caleb and you know guys like christian roland walls have played out of their minds you know eric gentry had another solid game saying why wasn't this guy playing more this season and one last thing the bye the bye week that came in now, also, we get a head start on the firing and the hiring. We actually, that you guys, this is the schedule we all freaked out about, but it seems like it's slowly giving the gift that keeps on giving because it is going to allow USC with that December early signing day coming around the corner. It's going to allow USC to get another weak head start on getting towards that defensive coordinator. So, um, a, another small silver lining for everybody. Avery, what else you got for us? Uh, how long have I been advocating for Darwin Ballo? Yeah. Two, two carries for 44 yards and one touchdown, and he never saw the ball again. Um, I've actually got a question, but I'm pointing out some other things. Let's tell you well, let's, let's, let's hit that. Avery, it. hang on. Thoughts on that, Matt? Huh? Thoughts on Barlow and not getting the ball back the, the rest of the game? I mean, he should have gotten more touches, but like, you know, Austin Jones and what other guys were doing in the running game was working, and, you know, USC had a touchdown to go up late and that was called back by a penalty on the edge so you know really usc should have had 49 points in this game <clears throat> let's not spend too much time talking about the offense i mean the offensive line played really well like that was much closer to the standard which was set I, I, yeah yeah i mean I, I, I was 
Like, was, the U.S. Was, didn't lose this game because sorry, USC did not lose this game. Be, USC did not lose this game because Lincoln Riley failed to run the ball. It's because of Alex Grinch. Yeah, right, my, my right. point is exactly. I, I mean, that was one of the things. One of the things I was trying to trying to get to for yesterday' question was uh, just things that I saw that let me know we're just we're not we're not all the way there. Or there hasn't been continuity. Uh, alluding to. Uh, you know, praising the offensive line. There was a uh, a time where there was a, I think it was a seven man blitz, and they stopped to pick it up and call out the protections, and everybody pointed and nodded, and they all were on the same page. I mean, we're week ten, and I don't think I've seen that much cohesion to let everybody know that they were on the same page and what their roles and responsibilities were. It lets you know that okay, like all right, th- there's something there. There's something that could have been there if fans might have been coached better. Meanwhile, on the other side. I forget what third down it was. Mason Cobb's looking at his his, his whatever uh, power 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 ranger pack to see what play he needs to change into or whatever, and he wasn't where he needed to be. And they, of course, they 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 threw his way or whatnot, or it was in his direction or his vicinity. It just shows you, just like man, we just really regress. But my question really was going to be how, and I asked you this the first week. How did Lincoln Riley not see this getting any worse when you practice against this or or, or, or or you sit down and talk to each other? I feel like at some point, Alex Grant should have been put on like the, the kid provision. Uh, before you go outside, show me your homework. Every week, he should have been showing Lincoln the, the, the game plan and Lincoln should have been yay, 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 yay. What, what should have been put out there because that, that's just how serious and crucial this season was. And it, it, it just baffles me. Like, is that a chink in, in Lincoln's armor? Yeah. Because he hasn't matured and is ready to take that next next step in his career because, like, you, you can't convince me you didn't know that you were. I mean, guys, they had Barry Alexander triple team all night. And you're putting, and you're putting, no no disrespect to those guys, but you're putting high school size guys out there against NFL size guys. What type of game plan? What did you think was going to happen? Yeah. Well, uh, to, going back to your point, about the, the 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 having to look at the plays, it just reminds me of an overly complicated system that you know. I th- here's what I would say: I think it does work on paper. Like I said this a long time ago. I think this defensive scheme that he has really lights up the eyes of defensive coordinators because they see the X's and O's, they see the benefits of it, they see how it adds puts pressure on quarterbacks, etc. In a passing league like the Pac-12, I think that they see it go, ooh, ooh, I like this, or in the Big Twelve as well, right? But when it comes to actually, like I said. A lot of experiments work in a lab in a controlled setting and everything goes great. But then once it gets to the real world, it kind of gets a bit loose. I think that's what we're seeing with this, this defense. I think I bet you on paper, this stuff's really clean, but the kids aren't picking it up. I'm calling them kids. Also young men. I know they're not picking it up and it's not translating to the game. And you had a couple of very, well, first off, Sua Cravens to me, like if you, if you haven't listened to him on the pregame show, I don't know what you're doing. Love the way he breaks everything down. If you're not following on Twitter, you know, I'm Susie. If you guys aren't checking out Sula Cravens, you're crazy. But he's been outspoken about it, talking a lot. He said, you know, I played the NFL. I played at college. I've been a lot of schemes. You name it. I've been in it. And I'm looking, and I don't understand the coverages. I don't understand the, 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 the assignments. I don't understand, you know, the lack of, of, of gap uh, control that they have. He's throwing it all out there. Matt Leinert has been consistently very critical also, another guy's got those X's and those. And they have a critical eye on the outside who, who love this program. You know they do. I can't think of anyone that loves the program more than, than Sua Cravens. And he's watching this happen, and he's saying, this just isn't working. It doesn't make any sense to me. So that makes me go back on what I was saying before. I've turned full circle, saying that this is just isn't working, and they need to do something quickly. Unfortunately, guys, last two games of the year, it doesn't make any sense to fire him now. It doesn't. Probably do more harm to the team than it would uh, and, and the, and the search and, and the new DC search than it would to uh, make a splash and make everyone happy. So I got a bunch of crap just, last night for I it. Disagree. Okay. I'd love I to disagree. hear why. What's the benefit? And the, and the reason I disagree is the reason I disagree is suppose something was to happen to Matt where he had to transition to another phase of his life or something just happened where he can come over and continue to do his portion of the podcast. Would you, would you shut it down? No, you would evolve and refine whatever aspect it was in your operation to continue to go forward. Ultimately, you can't tell me that you're paying uh, secondary coaches, defensive line coaches, X, Y, Z amount of money, and they 
throughout the portion of what they've been through, they can't come together with a scheme and do some portion of the aspect of their job as if their boss wasn't going to be fired or let go for something ever in their life. That's just life. Make those folks do their job for many time of the week. Make them put together some type of uh, uh, on-the-fly yeah. clamor and, right. and, and figure it out. You, you, well, you I get you. You can't, you can't give them a pass. I get you, Avery. You it's, it's, I get you, Avery. Well, I got you. Your point made. Here's what I'm gonna say. So, good analogy. Um, let's say you have someone you're doing a show with, and you're gonna do it for the season, right? And they're not pulling their weight, and they're screwing up, right? Just like Grinch, right? It, for continuity's sake, you're gonna finish out the year, and then you'll make that change you feel that's best for the show, right? Doing it in the middle of the season might cause more disruption than it would at the end, where you have plenty of it. And then at the end of the season. You can reestablish it, maybe, and bring in someone else, et cetera, right? That's the prudent thing to do. Not to make the knee-jerk change, especially, again, with two weeks. Here's the thing. These are young men. You saw how emotional all of them. Did you see the faces in the post-game interview that these, these kids on defense had? Right now, listen, we all hate Alex Grinch, you know? I mean, I don't hate him, but you guys, as a, as a collective, there's so much hate for Alex Grinch right now. In that locker room, there's not that same hate. You know, this was their leader, and they're, they're going to war with them, and et cetera, blah, blah, blah. If firing him is not going to fire these guys up, I don't think it is. It may, it may uh, fire up some of the guys that maybe were not getting playing time that would like get playing time. That's a whole different story. But as far as the last two games yeah, of the season, yeah. it's going mean, right to disrupt. There, right there hey, Avery, hold on a minute. There, there's, you know, the, it's going to upset more people in a situation that's going to help. The prudent thing to do is to wait to the end of the season. There's two more games. Like I just explained to you, there's, they get a week early, a week early you know, in the season to start the th hunt. And then you have your 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 uh, your search start a week early. Get that guy in quick, so you have a little bit of time before the early signing period. Your response? Right now, and you can take this how you want to take it. The next six to nine months will be the most important in this program's uh, uh, trajectory over the next three to five years. Simple because. But do you want to believe it or not, the first game of the year next year is in Vegas against LSU. Nothing about the mentality and the direction of the program have you thinking that they're going to be stable in the next 90 days to even get ready to be big boys to, stay, to get off an airplane and make that decision. So for starters, what you need right now is something to kick the can, start a, 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 a different mindset of what's going on and what needs to happen. You can't tell me Sean Newell doesn't think there's something else that needs to be done. You can't tell me Roy Manning. Uh, doesn't think something else. They need to do their jobs, minus the the, the huncho that the body has been moving with, and they need to come up with some some type of ideologies for the next fourteen days, two weeks, and get it done. So so to the new huncho comes in and gets it done. Appreciate and your thoughts, Avery. Hey, uh, thinking, great talking. great point. Appreciate your thoughts. Again, I disagree. I disagree last night. I disagree now. Matt, what what are your thoughts? Thanks. By the way, Avery, thanks again for calling in. We we got to move on. I'm so bad. This Avery, you raised some great points. No problem. I'm bad. Let's, <laughs> I want to give you guys time, but you know, 20 minutes on one phone call. This is totally Matt and I talk all the time about. We gotta get more Absolutely. phone calls in. Talk, all right, Avery. Hey, great Good points. Thank you. Great. On, Fight on, man. All right. Sorry about. That. Sorry, Matt. I, know I just I get talking. No, it's um, all right. But just really quick. Move to call. That, yeah, sure. Yeah. Do you want? Do you really quickly? Do you want to respond to that while I grab the next call? Yep. Move through our calls. Okay. So next call, we got next call coming in. Hi, what's your name and where are you calling from? Oh, I think they dropped. Okay. Um, so so Avery makes up some good points, but um, again, Matt, I, I want to know what you think. Do you think at this point with two games left? Oh, here we go. Thanks for calling. What's your name and where are you calling from? Good morning, Tim. Good morning, Matt. This is Cam from Thousand Oaks. Cam, on. fight on, man. How hey, you doing? I, I, I'm a good. Uh, well, best I can be expected after last night's game. Right. Hey, I'm a second generation ticket holder. Um, coincidentally, I had Michael Pen Penix's uh, cousin sitting behind me, and his mom in front of us, um, because so many of my fellow ticket holders had either given or given or sold their seats uh, because they're so disappointed, which is just a bummer. Um, but I, I'm not calling. I'm I'm not calling about firing. Get, uh, Grinch. I think that's beating a dead horse. I've been going to games since watching AD beat up Notre Dame back in 74. Um, I'm calling because I'm so disappointed that we're going to single-handedly, our coaching staff is going to single-handedly 
help Caleb lose his second Heisman. Um, it just kills me that a Buckeye um, has won the Heisman twice. It still kills me to this day. And I'm going to hear you guys talk a little bit about uh, the disappointment as a fan base and the players and how we have let down Caleb Williams' opportunity to really excel this year. He had such a great opportunity. Uh, I'm just, um, as, a, as a fan, I'm disappointed. And I'm just really bummed for our players, our players and our fans, man. I'm just, just truly bummed. I'll finish saying this. I still hate Notre Dame. I still hate Ohio State. Love you guys. Fight on. Oh, man. Thanks. Fight on, Cam. You knocked out of the park. Uh, I'm sure also, Cam, I heard that you say you're watching, um, you used to watch uh, AD run the ball and and watching Archie Griffin win twice when eight one of those probably should have belonged to AD if they voted properly um that that's a stinger I, I'm with you I've been talking about this a little bit myself absolutely yeah you know I, I've been talking about this myself um I I one thing when he, when he jumped when he jumped in the stands you know everyone deals with their with adversity in, in their own way the one thing you cannot doubt when it comes to to um number 13 he 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 cares so much about winning. Like this guy is a winner. Uh, he's still young. People got to realize that. And uh, for for this defense, because literally, look at that offensive performance last night, Cam. Um, um, Cam, look look at that offensive performance, Matt. That should be able to win a game ninety nine out of a hundred times, and we just saw the one hundredth time last night. That that performance by him was Heisman quality. Was everything we know about him. Run. He wasn't hesitant to run. He was making the throws. He was hanging in the pocket. He showed poise. You know, we could talk about the offensive line a little bit because they, they regressed a little bit as far as the uh, the pass protection in that game. But overall, pass protection was okay. The running game was phenomenal. You know, uh, Austin Jones just had himself a game. Barlow came in crazy. Uh, you brought Raleigh Brown came in with you know some great game planning by them, and he played a solid game. Um. It's hard to watch this defense let down the the offense, and it's not again. What hurts the most is is I know we've got solid talent on that side defense side of the ball. Um, I know there's huge heart on that defensive side of the ball, just as much as Caleb. So those guys are all hurting. You can see it in that press conference, and for whatever reason, it's not working, and, and that's why uh, the change has to be made. I think that he still has a super outside chance. He could get hot because his performance, although we stunk it up, Caleb did not. Caleb played very well. Wins and losses will matter when it comes to the Heisman Trophy. You know, it goes to the best guy, the best team usually. And he has a chance. Listen, there's going to be a big stage at Austin. Not as big, but pretty big stage at Austin. If he goes up there and they somehow <laughs> win the game, he's in. He, I, I know, Matt. I get it, guys. I'm not saying they're going to. I'm saying for Caleb, Caleb goes up there and absolutely lights it up. And let's say their offense doesn't get off the bus uh, and, and they win the game. Uh, it's it's going to be he's still he's still there. I at least want to get him to New York. Um, your guys' thoughts on that? I would doubt Absolutely it at this agree. point. I think, uh, it's a crowded right. it's a crowded room. You have Penix, you have Knicks, you also have Marvin Harrison, you also have Ollie Gordon from Oklahoma State, who's really lighting it up statistically. So I I would I highly doubt Caleb's going to make it to New York. Okay. Any thoughts, yeah, uh, Cam? It's, it's it's yeah, it's it's tough. He he was he was magic last night. I mean, he he obviously on two plays alone held onto the ball a little too long, uh, but I think that has to that comes with him wanting to carry the team on his shoulders, and and I believe he really felt that. And watching it in the stands, we we saw that. Uh, but it was it was funny hearing uh, Michael Penix's family behind me when when Caleb had the ball, just hear, hear them say, "Oh my God." <laughs> yeah. They were they were amazed, and he out he 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 totally outplayed Michael Penix. Now Michael Penix threw some, just just nailed a couple of throws at third and eighteen. I'm still shaking my head. I, I just that that's going to wake me up at night for years to come, um, because we should have not. I mean, you guys have talked about it already, that, and that should just never ever happen. And it, yet it's happened all year long, over and over game, game after game. Uh, we just finally had a uh, a true Heisman candidate through a through a laser instead of a pig farmer. So that's it for me, you guys. Hey, I love you guys. I love this. I love that you guys are doing this live show. Fight on. Fight on, Cam. Thank you so much for calling. Thank you. Yeah, one 
One comment um, that Cam brought up, by the way, that, that's uh, phone lines are open, you guys, if you want to call in. One thing that um, Cam brought up that pissed me off, too, I had tons of Wash The Washington fans around me probably weren't as classy as the ones you had. It truly made me almost think about rooting for the Ducks in that championship game. Uh, by the way, all of you fans that did sell your tickets to that game, one, you missed a great game, two, uh, thanks a lot for putting all those guys around my section. Thank you for calling. Thank, thank you for calling in. Please, uh, turn. can you turn your, um, your uh, computer down real quick? Thanks for calling. What's your name and where are you calling from? Hey, guys. It's Russ in San Diego. Russ, what's up, Russ? Doing good, guys. Still, still a little, uh, little sore from last night. But, um, you know, real quick on the defensive coordinator front, you know, this kind of reminds me of, you know, we got this complicated system going. And I was talking about it with my buddy who played defense in college football last night. You guys remember when Monty Kiffin, was our defensive coordinator for a year. I think it was the first year that Lane was the coach. And, you know, he's a, he's a Hall of Fame defensive coordinator, a Super Bowl winning defensive coordinator. And everyone thought, like, oh, this is going to be a home run. And he left after a year because the system was too complicated. And, you know, it's, it's just interesting because, you know, when you're in the NFL and – you have years and years and you're going to have the same players, you know, you can implement a, a defense, you know, a, a more complicated sort of system. So I just think Grinch, it's, it's a moot point. He's gone. There's a 0% chance he's back, but you know, Kiffin had the likes of Rondé Barber, Warren Sapp, Derek Brooks and Simeon Rice in the NFL. And then when he came to college to do this complicated system, it didn't work because you're, you're trying to get 19 and 20 year olds to do what NFL hall of famers were, were doing for you. Mm. So, you know, that's, um, that's neither here nor there. I guess that's sort of a moot point because Grinch is gone, but just an observation I had while you guys were talking earlier, it must've been a blur um, for I, you. It must've been a blur for you. Cause Monty wasn't here for one year. He was like, for what, Matt, three years. I mean, it was it wasn't a one year thing. It, it, and the thing with that was, it wasn't is, a one year thing. <clears throat> no, no, he was here more than one year. Um, and one, one thing you got to remember also with that Tampa two that he was running, you, you, I agree with you. You either you need either an elite linebacker that can drop right, like they can they can run, fly like the wind to drop back, uh, or or it's not going to work out. And a lot of years when they're trying to do that, it just wasn't there, and that was part of the issue. But um, yeah, right. Anything else? <laughs> but you know, yeah. yeah. So you know, I, I was kind of thinking about the future, and you know, these past two years have been so bizarre because last year. I think everyone would have been happy with an eight and four season and we end up going 11 and one in the regular season. And this year, everyone was expecting 11 and one and it's kind of looking like we're going eight and four. And I'm just, I'm kind of excited and I want you guys to, you know, comment on, on how you feel as well. But this, you know, it's, it's weird because I think Caleb Williams on our offense has, elevated the offense to a level higher than it should be. But I also think, especially this year with some of the players that we were able to bring in, having Grinch coach the defense has lowered the defense uh, incredibly from what it should be. So, you know, I, I feel that like next year with, an, with Caleb gone, we'll have a much better like, okay, where is our actual offense at sort of thing. When, you know, when we don't have a quarterback who can run around, you know, pirouette around for three circles and throw a 50 yard pass. But, you know, where's our defense going to be as well? I mean, how much better would this defense be if we just had like your average defensive coordinator? So I'm, I'm kind of curious to see where the program is going to be. This feels next year kind of feels like almost, it, it feels like we're like, it's a, it's a clean break. We're going to the big 10. We're going to get a real defensive coordinator. We're going to have to make it work without Caleb. It, it almost seems like this is kind of like another year one for us. So, you know, how, how do you guys feel about that? Matt? Well, we got to see what defensive coordinator we get, and we got to see if uh, Lincoln Riley is willing to fire uh, strength coach Benny Wiley. And let, let's not forget that piece of the puzzle, that as much as Grinch can't coach his way out of a wet paper bag, this is a soft team, and and a, I mean, offensive line played well, but you know, look, 
in every game, one of the two lines is is been really bad. You know, if it's not one, it's the other. Uh, and that uh, that is a soft team. You need to see in a game everyone playing tough physical football, just not there. And this is year two. You know, last year was year one. You could say oh, transition, trying to get things settled. This was year two. Habits, tendencies, identities, they're supposed to be more fully formed. And they weren't. We've seen regression. And, you, you know, it, you know, the conversation all off season, as soon as the Cotton Bowl ended is you can't do half measures. You can't settle for average or, you know, slightly below average. You need to get the best. Like, what are we here for? USC is supposed to be competing for national championships, supposed to be competing for college football playoff bids. You don't settle for average on your staff. You go for the best. And Benny Wiley and you can say whatever you want about how, you know, oh, strength coaches, it's really hard to tell who's better, who's worse. There are strength coaches, like look at Alabama, look at Georgia, um, Oklahoma. Now, Oklahoma just lost, but that was a little bit more about they have a bad offensive coordinator who needs to be fired. It wasn't so much that they got out toughed. They just, uh, their play calling was horrible. Um, you know, Oklahoma is generally playing physical football. Like that was a 27-24 game for Oklahoma yesterday against Oklahoma State. Defense was actually pretty good. Um, you know, there are strength coaches across the country doing a far better job with Benny Wiley. You can't just say, he's my guy, if you're Lincoln Riley, and I'm going to stick to him because that was the same rationale with Alex Grinch. He's my guy. I believe in him. No, that's not good enough. That's not a good enough rationale for keeping him. So if we, if Lincoln Riley just fires Alex Grinch and doesn't fire Benny Wiley as well and get an upgrade there, you know it's hard it's hard to be overly optimistic uh, about the Big Ten uh, and and USC's place within it. There needs to be both moves, not just one of them. Yeah, um, I mean I, I'm not, I don't really have much to add to that. I think you covered it, Matt. Uh, yeah. Any, anything else for us, Russ? Yeah, just, you know, I, I completely agree that, that Benny needs to go. And, you know, I think one thing that's interesting is, is everything in sports and football, particularly in college football, it's become such about optimization. And, you know, I think one thing that's interesting is with these, these time limits, I think it's what, 20 hours a week, you're allowed to practice. Yeah. There's some limit. Well, you know, teams aren't teams don't use that for strength and conditioning anymore. So the players have to come in, and obviously the, the conditioning guy, you know, Benny's going to be there when they come in, but they have to come in on their own time. You know? It's not part of like the mandatory practice. So you know, maybe maybe Benny Wiley would have been a great strength and conditioning coach twenty years ago when he would have them three hours a day, and you know, he got to do whatever he wants. But, you know, it's a different game now. And clearly, at the very least, I think, you know, Wiley, you know, he hasn't been getting it done and probably another area where we need to modernize. Yeah, agree with you. Really appreciate every time you call in, Russ. Uh, these, I think it is too complicated. That's probably the biggest problem. You see guys not attacking. You guys see thinking. You guys see guys not being able to line up. You see guys lining up in the wrong gap, do the wrong assignments, broken coverages like we saw again. I mean, how on earth do you let uh, you know Odunze or Polk get wide open over the middle or on that third down, down the line? I mean, how, how do you let these things happen time and time again? Uh, the, the kids, uh, not only do they not get it at the beginning of the year, they're not picking it up, and um, that's why change is coming. Russ, thanks again for calling in. Look forward to you calling uh, again soon. Fight on, boys. Thanks every time. Appreciate it. Fight on, Russ. All right, that brings another line open for you guys to call in. Um, you know, this is therapy and we're here for you. I hear a lot of stuff in the chat. I'm going to try to, you guys, I'm not, we're not going to cut you off, but I, I would like people just maybe just one or two thoughts and then we'll move on. Thank you for calling in. Um, thank you for calling the Trojan therapy again. This is, this is round three for us. What's your name and where are you calling from? Hey guys, Dave from Iowa. Dave, thanks for calling in. How you doing, Dave? Can you hear me? Yeah, loud and clear. Awesome. Okay. Well, uh, you know, tough loss last night. Um, and you know, Tim, I hope it's all right that 
I bring up the press conferences, but I'm sure you guys know the saying that, you know, children are a reflection of parents. Those players are a reflection of Lincoln Riley. Not interested in doing a press conference after after a 10-point loss. And it kind of has that feeling that, in reality, they, it's like, I mean, I don't know how to say it, but it's just like 10-point loss and, you know, they can't even, like, say, yeah, you know, we lost to a really good team or whatever the case is. And it was just weird seeing Caleb Williams out to the left just standing there. And just in terms of comparing, I actually watched a Cal's postgame press conference after the Oregon beat down and completely flipped. So just curious, you know, from that perspective, is there, is there, do, do you think there's a problem in the locker room or just the idea of like, Hey, you know, something just isn't working in the locker room. Okay. So Matt, Matt is a credentialed uh, media member. I am not. And I, here's what I'm going to tell you. Okay. I'm going to say this flat out. There's a lot of acrimony from the media towards this staff. And quite frankly, it seems like this team in general, and the team has picked up on it, and there's acrimony going back now. If you look at the previous press conferences, there have been some, you know, they've been very candid. A lot of the guys are very candid. But these kids now at this point feel like they're being attacked. Because what we, again, I said it earlier in the show, we're like, oh, you know, we as a collective, I'm not saying I'm like this, but we as, as a fan base, and quite frankly, some of the media, are literally in attack mode. And they're attacking the coaching staff, and they're attacking the staff, and what do you expect these kids? I get you. I could be fighting. I remember when I was a teenager or not even teenager, if I was a tw- in my 20s and I was arguing with my mom and dad. But if somebody started attacking my mom and dad, now I got a problem with you. I forget about my issue with my mom and dad. Keep that in mind as well. You know, they feel like they're under attack. And quite frankly, a lot of media, I think, has a, you know, a very valid point about how they've been treated. But there's also members in the, in the media that I've been watching that are just, I don't know, it just seems like they're, they feel like they're entitled they're entitled to a story, but they're not entitled to get every answer they want the way they want it and, and to attack people basically almost personally. So, Matt, what are your thoughts as actually a real media member? You know, uh, losing locker rooms are no fun and losing locker rooms after season ending like this basically ended USC season in terms of the main goals that USC still had left on the table. I mean, you know, locker rooms are going to be miserable. And in terms of you know acrimony on the team, you know, Alex Grinch is bad at his job. Let's leave it at that. And I mean, when when the players know that the coach is not very good, like you're not going to get uh, a great vibe uh, in any locker room, uh, whether it's the NFL, NBA, college football, no different. I mean, these are 20 year old athletes. These aren't pro athletes. These are 20 year olds. Um, Grinch is bad at his job. Everyone in the room knows it. Everyone in, in the room knows that Grinch, uh, you know, uh, just is is failing manifestly and is certainly going to be gone. So I, I I really don't think we need to extrapolate much more beyond that. So you think that their answers last night matches, so I can clarify this. You think their answers last night were based on the fact that they've lost the locker room or that the, the team feels like it's, so like I said, uh, do you think I'm off of the fact that I think this team feels like they're under attack because their team's being attacked by the media? And there's this, this and granted, I will say that that might be caused by Lincoln Riley and, and his stance on how he treats the media. But uh, I don't, I, I, do you think, sorry to clarify, you think that the way they responded yesterday with, with um, their comments and their short answers and whatever, do you think that's because of Alex Grinch and losing the locker room? No, uh, 100%. I, man. I, I, I personally think I, Oh, my bad. Sorry. Go on, Matt. My apologies. Go, go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, me personally, I don't, th- I, I, me personally, I, I, I truly think it's Lincoln Riley in the locker room. I mean, I just can't believe how, I mean, like from, from when I compared Cal's post game and USC's post game, I truly felt that it was more of like, I mean, I, I, like it, I, I don't have to say it, but it's just like Cal's post game. Those kids understand how to ha- handle in a sense, negative press conferences and it was a beat down and USC's, I mean, it kind of seemed like it, 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 it I'm sorry, it, but it, I, 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 at the end of the day, I just think it's Lincoln Riley and potentially the locker room, the, the and, and the locker room and potentially the, the like, and potentially like the, and potentially, like you said, the way he handles the media, um, you know, the, 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 the players do the same. And honestly, that's not a good image. I'm not okay. So really clearly, I'm not arguing that either. 
I'm also not arguing that the 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 players will take a page from the coaching staff. I totally agree with that as well. I'm just saying I think we're taking a little bit too far to say the way they're they're displaying uh, yes last last night how they acted to the media glib as well as just blunt really. Um, I think it had very little to do. You know, it's funny because we we've been saying, oh, we don't want to hear the all the coach speak. We don't want to hear all the football talk, right? Oh, we're gonna get them next time. Is that blah blah? They played a great game. You know, got to give credit to them. We didn't hear any of that last night, and yet people are complaining about it. Dave, I got to be honest. You know, we got answers that aren't the normal answers. You want to go? Yeah, you know, we got to do better. We got to play better. We we got blown out. You know, we we got to practice harder. I mean, what's that gonna tell us too? As well, I think the answers we got last night were even like more candid than we would have got normally. Well, you know, it's you know we got to practice harder and we got to do what we do and practice and bring it to the field. I mean, do you want those answers? Uh, we sucked last night. You know, we're terrible. I'm not sure what you're looking for from them after that loss. I mean, me personally, I mean, I, I, I mean, you know, you know, uh, what is it? 30 years ago, you know, I played sports just like everyone else. And hey, if you lose, head up, take the guy's hand, you know, and address the situation. I mean, obviously, I mean, obviously, 30 years ago, I wasn't talking to the media, but if I was. Dress the media, say it like it was. Hey, this performance, you know, wasn't acceptable. We got to do better or whatever. And, and, and to the point of not just saying it, but acting it, you know, head up high, no, head up high, sit up straight, no, for Caleb, no leaning on the wall. And I understand, you know, he was just put in that situation. He didn't choose that, right? But just the idea of like, hey, you know, but, well, first of all, uh, well, first of all, uh, sorry, first of all, like you said, like you said, uh, Tim, um, you know, for, you know, a couple or a couple of shows now, you know, actions speak louder than words. Hey, sit up straight, stand that's, up, own it, that's take it. what matters. Hire a defensive coordinator, fire Benny Wiley. That's what matters right now. Yeah, I think that the lo losing is causing a lot of this analysis and that if we're winning, we wouldn't care how they stand at the press conference. We wouldn't care what they say. It's just about wins and, and losses. And quite frankly, Dave, to be honest with you, do you have any doubt that these guys feel like that performance was good enough? I mean, they, these guys no, know. They, they, mean, they, I, you can sorry. see it in their faces that they know that. I mean, they've said it for weeks now. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't think we need to hear it from them. You can look at their faces. You can tell they're dejected. and They realize that they didn't play well. I, that's just me. I don't. You know, I, I work with middle aged kids, right? So, I, I you you can you can see it in their faces. They say more with their face than they do with their mouth. At that age, what comes out of the mouth is usually not what's really going on behind the scenes. And although I'm not comparing college athletes to middle school kids I, I i refer to them as kids because i'm an old man um the point i'm trying to make is is you can see in their demeanor that they care that's what matters to me the most is is those kids were devastated that's what i want to see because that's really telling me that they they're, they're down um and that they need someone in that locker room to rally them up they need their coaches have to rally them up get them going but they need to feel that disappointment it's healthy disappointment for these these guys to feel in that locker room <clears throat> and they weren't they weren't like playing it lightly. They actually do care about this thing. And nothing says you more than just seeing their actions. And so, I mean, I, I'm not sure what you're looking for, but listen, Dave, I appreciate you always calling. Thanks again. Hope you call in very soon. Thanks guys. Hey, wait, sorry. Just one last thing. Hey, after the loss, you know, Hey, round of applause for Lincoln Riley. He did say, you know, he takes responsibility for this loss, but I'm pretty sure at the end of that sentence, he did say that I haven't been shying away from it, which in reality he has. But thanks for your time. All right. Thank you, Dave. Well, it may appear that way again, like we've been talking about. There's also a lot going on behind the scenes that none of us have any clue to what's going on. So we don't know what Lee could rise doing behind the scenes. So next caller, where are you calling from? And uh, what's your name or what's your name and where are you calling from? Hey, you guys. How you doing? My name is Preston calling in from Miami. Fight on. Fight on, Preston. Hey, yeah, so I just had a couple observations. I actually wanted to get you guys' opinions on some stuff. Um, I went out to the Notre Dame game um, probably about a month ago at this point. And on the sidelines, man, I noticed just a lack of fire from our staff. Like, nobody seems to have any type of intensity. None of our coaches. I saw Taylor Mays out there, you know, with some good energy and uh, possibly one of, one of the GAs or – when the strength and conditioning guys, man, but there's a big difference. Mm. When I was watching Oregon versus Washington State a couple weeks ago, I see Dan Lanning sprinting up the sidelines while his tight end is catching passes, man. So I think just in terms of our culture 
just in terms of the trajectory of the program, we do need to replace Grinch. We do need to replace Wiley. But we also need to make sure that their replacements have that fire, have that intensity that, you know, kids want to play for him. Kids want to, like, you know, give up everything for him, man. We don't have them on the sidelines right now. Matt? Well, you know, so Jim Leonard, Tom Allen, uh, the the top choices as defensive coordinator, like they have the fire. Uh, so like no, no worries there. I think strength coach is the one where like the obvious candidates don't pop off the board nearly as readily. That's going to take more homework. But uh, like I think we all know who the elite defensive coordinators are. It's a matter of convincing them to make the move because a lot of them you know, won't be in a position to say, uh, you know, to, to say yes, Lincoln Riley needs to convince them that, hey, not they'll have full control of the defense and also that like the training regimen, uh, the strength and conditioning piece is going to be what something they're comfortable with. So there are a lot of conversations attached to interviewing a defensive coordinator and making the sales pitch to get them in. And that's really what matters right now at USC. Yeah. Speaking of sales pitches really yeah. quick, I've gone 50 minutes already. Um, and I have it in my sales pitch. You guys, if you're enjoying the show, a lot of you guys say you do. Also, we we go live at random times, especially with these call-in shows. If you haven't already subscribed, you look down there in the corner, uh, down the corner by Matt, the corner Matson down there in the corner. There's a subscribe button. If you hit that subscribe button, you'll know when we go live <clears throat> for these call-in shows. Um, means the world to us that we got we've got 185 people in here right now. Uh, love this, love that the show is growing. The best way for it to grow so you guys know it's available is hit that subscribe button that way and, and the notification bell. That way you know that when we do go live, um, that you'll get a notification and you won't miss one of the shows. So uh, thank you all for being here so much. Also, if you would, just take one second, hit that like button if you haven't. That's, you know, we're not charging you, but that's the best way to help out the show and help us. If you appreciate the show, if you find it entertaining, hit that like button and subscribe. Sorry, uh, sorry, go ahead, Preston. Yeah, man, I mean, I get it, you know. This is Hollywood. This is USC. But it just seems like, man, the staff, like, they're just too relaxed, man. And, like, you know, we had guys, I mean, some of my favorite children of all time, I mean, Cushing, like, Matthews, you know, long, swollen hair. But, like, those guys were killers, man. Like, it wasn't about being relaxed, man. It was about hitting people in the mouth. And I just want to see, like, this staff and, like, this program, you know, return back to, you know, this golden era. So, yeah, fight on. It's been rough. It's been a hell of a season. And, um, you know, I think we have a bright future, but we got to make some changes. Preston, great first call, you guys. That's Preston's first call, knocked out of the park. I hope more people are calling in. Preston, I hope you call back. Great call, great points. Yeah, for sure. Man. Fight on. Thank you. You guys have a good one. You too. Fight on. All right. Um, waiting for the next caller. Hey, listen, really quickly, uh, Matt just threw off a couple names there with Allen and Leonard. You know, I'm, I'm still holding up maybe that, that they might have Aranda available after the, another Baylor loss. <laughs> those are Tyler, those are tagging up. Um, guys in the chat, go ahead and put you, who do you think? Who do you think should be? Or if you watch this afterwards, go ahead and put in the comment section. Who would your who's your short list for DCs? Because we'll know that'll be opening up pretty soon. Great caller calling in right now. I just recognized the phone number. LV Tro LV Live. How you doing, bud? Hey, what's going on? Find from the East Coast. How's everybody doing today, man? Doing good. You're breaking up a little bit. I mean, how's that sound? Is it a little better now? No. Uh, getting better, but listen, I, I don't care. I'll, I'll listen. Uh, audio quality to me doesn't matter. You bring the content. So, uh, what do you got for us? Um, here's the thing, too, guys. Um, you have to understand, like, you know, the, the expectations were through the roofs, right? Because I hear a couple people calling about how the kids were acting. I said, the expectations were through the roofs, right? They were one game away from the playoff last year. So, coming into this season with the Heisman Trophy winner, Everything was like playoffs or bust. I mean, that was really what the expectations was, right? So that's what you saw last night from those kids. They realized, they heard, they heard the chirping. They heard all the noise. They heard the expectations, everything. And when that was pretty much solidified last night, that was the emotions you saw. You saw Caleb upset crying. That's why he was here. That's why you come to XC. So to me, the emotions, that's what I want to see. I want to see guys that are upset. I want to see guys that are pissed off because they realized what happened out there last night. So... I don't really, you know, people are kind of saying how they should be. Should, listen, man, look, this is sports. If anybody's ever strapped it up and kind of went out and played their hardest, you're going to understand the emotions that come with being an athlete. You're not going to be at your best all the time. You're going to be pissed off. 
because everybody knows why they lost. Yeah, they lost because of the defense. Everybody knows. You think Lincoln doesn't know that? So that's the question. He's a human being at the end of the day. He's perfect. So he doesn't know. He can't come out and say, "I'm firing this guy right now. I hate him." He can't do that. That's what people want to hear. But he cannot do that. So what you saw is you saw emotion for the first time in a long time. You didn't see coach speak. You didn't see anything fake. You saw it in your face. We're, we're pissed off because we knew what that we were number five in the nation, guys. Let's go back to what we were. All so right, that's what you see. You see a bunch of kids. Oh. Yeah, no, sorry. I just was just add to um, we weren't number five. People were saying we were number five. Clearly, even back then, if you if you can look now back in hindsight, these problems were back there. Even it's just the only difference now is is the competition's getting better. Sorry, go ahead, LB, you're on a roll. I, I'm sorry, I'm, 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 I'm sorry, Tim. What, what, what was preseason? Preseason, we were what? Preseason, I think we we're like seven or six, weren't we? And then we moved up six, to five. Seven, okay, seven. okay, all right, okay, yeah, okay, and we moved. And we moved up to five. Yeah, you know what? The funny thing also is people chatting in the chat about Arizona, and we got dropped because we want a close game down in the desert, which that close game down the desert against, you know, against Fafita is looking a lot better than it did a couple of weeks ago when when we got dropped two points or three po- the three spots because we won a game. You know, USC won two games that got dropped. Now with the third loss, that really doesn't matter, but I'm just saying the perception is still there for USC. I, I, I mean, absolutely. I mean, look at our record, guys. I mean, if, if this was the pros, our record would be pretty good, seven three. But in college, we looked at it as being terrible. But that's because the expectation was USC is going to fix the defense because that's all they need to fix. You fix the defense, this team is going to be in the playoffs. That was the expectation, especially with Caleb Williams. If you, if we, the same game, that kid, that kid is nearly the best player in the country. There is no one better. So everyone knew when they're coming back with those weapons, you have a defense. Remember, Tim, we said. Not even quick, just average. We're going to the yeah. playoffs. Yep, that's true. And so with everybody, what you saw last night is just people, excuse my language, they were pissed off, man. They were pissed off. Even the players were pissed off. Like you said, Tim, earlier, we don't know what's going on behind the scenes. We don't know the infighting or arguing that's going on because guys are saying, listen, man, look, we're supposed to be in the playoffs. This is the same crap we were dealing with last year. So that's what you saw, raw motion and Riley in the middle. Yeah. Maybe his relationship with Grinch. He doesn't know he doesn't, he doesn't know what to do. So that's why he's kind of messed up. But now he's got to deal with it. But my question to you guys, I'm throwing it out to you and Matt, right? Should Caleb sit now? Should he play? If he knows that the season's over, should he play with the risk of the draft, injuries, all that stuff, with everything he's done here, should he go out there and play? At Oregon and against a tough UCLA defense, in you know, in, in, you know, at the Coliseum. What do you guys say? Should he? So, if I was his financial advisor, if I was a close family member, no. <laughs> Will he? Yes, because I think that's the kind of competitor that he is. I think he's a Trojan. I think he wants. He has a. He's a legendary Trojan here now. Uh, I think it's. I mean, I'm, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't remember anyone ever sitting out regular season games to this point yet. Uh, because of because of the, their career, um, uh, is there a chance he's playing in the Alamo Bowl or the ho- uh, the ho- Holiday Bowl or or the you know something like that? Zero chance he's playing in that bowl game. Zero chance. And I I don't blame him whatsoever. That uh, I think that he will because he's a competitor. He loves USC. You can see he absolutely loves USC. Um, he loves his teammates. He loves his team. I believe I don't want to speak for him. I'm you know I'm I'm saying yeah he he doesn't shut it down during the season. But there is zero chance I think he should and will play that bowl game. Yeah, you know, the the, the final game of the se- regular season is November 18 in two weeks. The idea that he should just pack it into, I mean, look, anytime you take the field in any sport, you, you're risking injury. The idea that we should now be at the point where prospective number one NFL draft picks, if they can't make the college football playoff, that they should – shut down their season before its natural end. And, you know, UCLA is a big game, right? Yeah. It's USC. You, you, you're playing against UCLA. You're, you're like, and I think. There's no he way he sits that one, Matt. You're right. If he doesn't finish out the season, that doesn't send the right message to NFL teams and executives, you know, and people are going to administer the Wonderlick test and all the battery of questions. Like that would feed uh, just into distractions. Like, let's remember, 
Caleb Williams, like there were people saying with some degree of legitimacy, like just based on how he had been playing, you know, especially the Notre Dame game, there were some people who were saying, oh, Drake May is the number one overall pick. Drake May this, Drake May that. They had Caleb sliding to number two or number three on their draft boards. Well, Caleb shut that down Saturday night with that performance. He reminded everybody who the big dog was. I think there were like 21 uh, NFL uh, teams uh, in attendance uh, for that game, had a, had a representative at that game. So he knew who was watching. And so you finish this thing out against a high-profile Oregon program against UCLA, and then you're done. November 18, like that, you, ha you have all the time in the world uh, to prepare. Like it's not as though Caleb has a Pac-12 championship game on December 1st to play for. Uh, you know, it's not as though his, his load is going to be extra heavy. You can be done on November 18, and then you have plenty of time to prepare for the combine uh, and, and the, the, you know, any of the, the uh, all-star college, all-star games in late January. So I certainly hope that we're not at a point where, oh, can't make the playoff, can't win, play in your conference championship game, shut it down in week nine, week 10. Uh, uh, I, I really hope yeah. that's not where the sport is going. And of course, you know, then we'll see Miller Moss and Malachi Nelson probably get a half each uh, in the Las Vegas Bowl or the Sun Bowl. And uh, and and that that's how it's going to be handled. But like if you're if you love USC and I think Caleb Williams does love USC, like he has not been a selfish Trojan. You know, he's appearing with other teams, giving them uh you know, headphones and other things. He's showing up at other games. Like he's supporting basketball. Yeah. Uh, like he's been a, a team oriented Trojan reaching out to the fellow, his fellow athletes within the program. You're playing against UCLA. And that would be, you know, in, a, in what has been a failed season and a very painful season for him. And we saw that pain pour out in front of the cameras last night. You want to finish your USC career by beating the Bruins. And, uh, you know, l l I, I really would hope we don't let NFL draft talk uh, get in the way of that, because then you lose something really precious in college football. I mean, it's bad. You know, it's bad enough when high profile draft picks from like Ohio State, they skip the Rose Bowl because it's not a playoff uh, bowl game. That's bad enough. But like, I get it. You know, you're pre you're preparing for your your life, your career. But if we're now, you know, skipping out rivalry games in week 12, middle of November, uh, wow, that would just be an, an, an even bigger loss for the sport of college football. All right, the second I stopped talking, Matt, I wanted to bring up the UCLA thing, and then you brought, I'm glad you brought it up right away because I, there, you know, LV, there is no, there, these, there's no way because you know, also he knows guys that this, the relationship between the fans of USC you say are is different than the relationship of the players between USC and UCLA. These guys all know each other. stuff. this is a, this is about as big a game as you can get. I think a lot of us get more wrapped up in the, if you ask the fans, we say Notre Dame's our number one rival. I think you ask the players, they say UCLA is our number one rival. So um, it's for the city of Los Angeles. It, it, you know, he's one and zero against them. I think he wants to continue and I almost guarantee he plays anything else. Um, LV. No, that was it. I mean, I, I totally, I totally agree with you guys. I mean, I was gonna, I was gonna mention the UCLA piece. Like he has, to, he has to make sure he finishes strong and beats your rival. That, that's, that's how I felt. I just want to see you guys' perspective on it. But to chime in also too with the executives, I did see the whole crew of the Giants executives, the GM, the assistant GM, and the player personnel at the game last night. So I was super <laughs> pumped for that. So hopefully we could trade up and snatch them. But yeah, that, 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 that's kind of like what I wanted to hear. But I just wanted, I want him to finish out strong. I don't, I don't think he should play in the bowl game. But if he finishes out strong, then pretty much, you know, we could probably, you know, stick it to those guys up there in Westwood. I think that'll be fabulous. All right, but listen, great show for you guys. I hit that like button. Everybody hit that like button for the show. These guys are amazing. I appreciate you guys. Fire on, fire on from the East Coast. Thanks for taking my call, guys. Yeah, fire as Thank always, you. LV. Always bring it. Great job. Yeah, and you know, tell you what, if he does go to New York, LV, I hope he goes to the Giants because when when Trojans go to Trojans go to the Jets, it's never a good situation. It was like a black hole when, when a Trojan goes to the Jets. So uh, appreciate. I thought Keyshawn had a good. But anyway, but but outside of Keyshawn. Uh, it's always been trouble. So I hope he goes to the Giants if he does go to New York. That opens up the phone uh, for people. If you want to call in, uh, we got a couple more short calls or maybe one or two longer calls uh, before we have to go. So we're right up about that hour. We've been here 
We try to keep it to about an hour, guys. Thank you for calling. Uh, you're on with Matt and Tim. Uh, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, Matt and Tim, first time listener. I mean, I follow you guys um, a couple months ago from um, the USA USCJ channel. So I want to give you guys kudos and big ups on what you guys are doing. My name is Frank. Call from Tucson, Arizona. Big USC fan. Yeah, and hey, by the way, so you guys and, out there, uh, if you're my, not if you're not already listening to USCJ, just phenomenal. Him and John Walker, just I mean, I I, I watch almost every one of their videos. Every one of their shows, those guys are awesome. Yeah, go go give them yes, a check sir. out over there. At I don't have my hat on. Usually, guys, that white hat I'm wearing that's USC Jay's uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, merch. Uh, Lost in the song. Love those guys. Yes, sir. Love those guys. I'm sorry. What's your name again? Yeah, yeah. My name is Frank. Um, I'm calling from Tucson, Arizona. I am born and raised in the Midwest. Um, played college football. I'm gonna name the college, but I played in the Big Ten in the late '90s. Awesome. So, with my untrained eye, I'm looking at it from a Player perspective, but also as a fan, been a USC fan since the Daryl Russell um, days because I was a D tackle. Yeah. So my question is this, and with a rant and so much more, I love USC. Um, I go to the game three times a year. Teammate of mine, we meet up, we go back to Indiana. Oop, I actually said a school name, <laughs> but we went back to Indiana, watch the Notre Dame game. While we were there watching, we both are good sized guys. You know, I'm 6'5, 340, he's 6'5, 370. And so we're looking at USC come out of Phil. And we're like, damn, these guys are small. What's going on? When they go against the Big Ten starting next year, I'm thinking Wisconsin, Iowa, the Corn Fed boys, the Midwest boys, we don't match up to them. We're not there. And I agree with Matt. Wiley got to go. The physicality with the defensive front is not there. Uh, every time I watch the games on TV, they are all – Kurt Hershey last night was like literally saying, USC need to get bigger. They're small. They're slanting. They're putting themselves out of position. Teams are seeing this. Even the announcers are seeing it. It's the same thing we have heard from the Clay Helton era. The physicality is not there on the defensive side of the ball. I don't know because it's a West Coast thing. I don't know what it is, but it all starts at the top. Another thing I noticed is the State, um, the San Jose State game, first game of the season. All the defensive players were looking at the wristband. On, you know, as a player, you're trained on defense. You attack, you attack, you attack. Man, you ball. That's it. These guys are looking at their wristbands. Middle of the huddle, right before they get down their stance, looking at the wristband. That told me right there the defense is um, confused with what's going on. Bear out of Vander. Look at his wristband. I won't say 13 times. I literally counted. That's how much time I had to do. But I was watching. I'm like, what is really going on out here? So I knew there was going to be trouble in paradise um, during the first game of the season. Now here we are, what, week 10. We're dealing with the same thing. I don't know. I mean, what, what do we need to do? Is it a culture problem? Is it um, the player development? I know we brought all the um, NIL guys in, but you cannot microwave success. You know, you cannot curry up and bring guys in and think you're going to just leap up to the 11 and 2 record, what we did last year. Yes, we call Lightning the Bottle. Was that from Clay Helton guys that were already there? Do we have a player development problem with Wiley and the physicality that we're having with the defensive line and the defensive front with Grinch or with Noah or Tua, wherever the defensive line command coach is? What's going on? It, it it baffles me. I'm so upset right now just thinking about it, but I love you guys. Love hearing you guys. I'm continue following on. Fight on. No. First off, wow, Frank, thank you. You were getting some great first-time calls, you guys. I hope you guys keep them coming. Frank, I hope you call back. I, I love I did not play collegiate yes, football. Yes, I will. Yes, sir. I, believe me. Well, listen to you so talk. You're, you're a smart man. I love I love listening to you, though. See, I work for Union Pacific here in, in, in Arizona, so... I'm on the railroad. I'm always listening to you guys. And I'm like, man, you guys keep me up at night, you know? So I want to say thank you so much. Uh, well, thank you. Cause you bring a perspective I could never bring and, and really appreciate you calling in. Um, yeah, the, the, they're small. And that was one thing that the Oklahoma people uh, talked about with the issue with this defense. Now you might be able to get away with it in, in the pack. 12 but you also bring a great point. It's going to be, I mean, Matt and I talked about this. It's going to be a different style of football when you get to the, uh, to the big 10, I think, though, yes, that if they can get those trenches figured out, I think that our offense is, you know, is going to give the, their their defenses fits. I know there's great defenses, all the respect in the world, what Iowa does, right? Um, it looks like with Jim Knowles that the yes, Ohio sir. State's bringing it around as well. So, but but I'm I'm confident and with most of the defenses where I am, where like you just said, up front that front seven. Um, I th I think you know we're good with Bear for yes, another sir. year. We got some size in them. You know, but the, yeah, you are. We start getting smaller. Stanley T and stuff like that. The guy was a linebacker, and we got him playing. Yeah. We got him playing end. You know, so I mean, I, I, 
it's it's scary. It's it's scary. Is that number forty? Is that number forty-seven? Yeah, that's Stanley T. Number forty-seven. Who is that? Oh my, yeah. I mean, you know, I love the kid. You know, yeah. I love any athlete that's on the plan, but he doesn't fit. The, he doesn't fit the bill. He does not fit the bill. I literally walk right by him. I'm like, who is this kid? Why is he a linebacker now? Him on a defensive front. Um, who was a Joe Alt, the Notre Dame all lineman. I mean, they were having their way with them. It yeah. was amazing how them guys were moving our guys that game. But yeah, I can't rant no more. Just thank in. you guys and fight on, buddy. Fight on, Frank. Just want to jump yes, in, talking yes, about how Notre Dame shoved us around. Notre Dame flopped against four and four, now five and four Clemson. So like that loss to Notre Dame looks considerably worse now than it than it even did at the time and it looked really bad at the time <laughs> like Notre Dame and Sam Hartman yes, they sir. couldn't untie their shoelaces on offense and yet because our offensive line got pancaked in that game you know we no showed that that just looks so much worse that's another reason fire Benny Wiley not just Grinch yes I agree Frank I agree I agree nailed it Frank Appreciate it. Yeah, I really I look forward to you calling back in, man. That's, that's again next level of analysis. Appreciate you calling in because those are trained eyes, and I appreciate it. whenever I hear the SC ex players or like you, an ex collegiate player. Uh, I just my ears open up, my eyes pop open. You know when I when you're used to it. You got you got um, Jaywalk talking over on USC Jay's channel. When when the guys that played this game talk, yeah. it's it's just a different level of analysis. And I really appreciate you guys calling to our show for sure. Yeah, you know, thank you and keep going. And I, I'm really proud of you guys, you know, so I would definitely be continue listening on and hopefully call once a week. Fight on, guys, and God bless you. Fight on. God bless. God bless yeah, you. Really quickly, I want to make I one be, more I, other point. I yeah. make one quick point. Logan Dow says KBA was the big linebacker we needed. I, I mentioned that because – Oh, God, yes. If there, if, there is, if there is a reason to fire Grinch now in the next 24 hours as opposed to waiting two weeks, I think the number one rationale would be – it would send a message to St. John Bosco and modern day that you're serious about defensive recruits and, and, and retaining them. And you're serious about building a defense. I think recruiting would be the number one reason you fire Grinch in the next 24 hours. But my bigger thing, he's it's, it's going to be no more than two weeks overall. So I don't think it's a game changer either way. If you do it now or you do it two weeks later, yeah. I'm just saying, if you were to do it now, that would be the reason to get future KVAs to say, hey, we're, we're serious about fixing this on defense, guys. Honest. And, and I thought uh, that about that it, too. Reason. I thought about it, too, Matt, especially recruiting angle on it. But unless you can give them a name and you won't be able to give them a name, it's sure that they'll prop their ears up. But I don't think the actual overall yeah. effect will be what, yeah. what a lot of fans think is going to be. I know you know that. I know. Yeah. I know you know. I'm going to sure. tell you. Without giving them a name. Now, if we walked in on Monday and said, hey, we're, we're moving away from Grinch and we're going to go towards uh, Jim Leonard. All of a sudden, I'm sorry, what, Jim Leonard, what? And then you got the kids here. When, when the time comes, you know, is, I said we get an extra week during this bye week. We thought we had a bye week yeah. for a championship game. Yeah. Well, that's that's sailed. Now, an extra week before the sign day, we're going to say we've we've moved away from, from Alex Grinch. I mean, they all know that at this point. But then they can yeah. probably say, hey, we're in talks with this guy, this guy, and this guy. They can say that kind of stuff. So um, right. well, maybe that's not. Right. Maybe maybe not. I don't think they can say that's that. Why it's not, that's why it's not life or death. That's why it's not existential in terms of having to do it now versus two weeks later. You're right. It, it doesn't matter that much. It, it, but like if, just, if you were to at least do it now, you would at least get people's attention. You wouldn't be able to have a name. You're right. But at least you would be, be sending the message. You know, we're beginning to uh, we like we're taking the first step. We we haven't taken all the steps, but we're taking that first step. Yeah, um, and then also I want to be very clear when I do this. I I know Frank didn't, and I'm not. We're not disparaging Frank uh, 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 Stevie T at all. I'm Stevie T. I'm doing it now. Um, Stanley T. At all. I just said to you he was a linebacker that because of necessity they've moved up to the front. This is not. This guy has played out. This guy's heart and building and retraining his body and what he's done, making the move for the team. Nobody should disparage him. We're saying that we're putting him in a very unfair position where it'd be very difficult for him to succeed. That's where I'm coming from. And that's why I heard from Frank. So uh, this is, this is not a, a, us coming down on, on Stanley whatsoever. A matter of fact, the opposite with me as a Trojan, I appreciate what he did for this team. He stepped up for his team. He played, he's playing out of position 
and and um, and really sacrificing his body moving up to that line when it's really not his true position. So um, my hats off actually to Stanley. So um, anybody else out there? Because we're we're out of calls. It's we're up a, a bit about a little hour. We're ready to go. Uh, yep. Any last thoughts, uh, Matt? Before we decide to get out of here. Uh, not, not really, you know, just, just, you got to fire Benny Wiley along with Alex Grinch. I think that's the main thing everyone needs to be mindful of right now, because we know Grinch is gone. It just, you have to fire Benny Wiley as well. Cause then if you don't fire Wiley, you don't get the training program that an incoming elite defensive coordinator would be comfortable with. You really need a defensive coordinator. Who's going to look at your training program and say, this is a place where I feel comfortable. You know, if Lincoln Riley retains Wiley and that means that a Jim Leonard or a Tom Allen or a John Heacock or a Tony Gibson turns you down well then Benny Wiley's getting in the way so you have to do Wiley along with Grinch it's so important to emphasize that right now yeah uh, and you've been calling for that for a while um, I think the change I think there's gonna be obviously people realize this is when you bring in a new defensive coordinator you're also bringing in a lot of coaches and there's some coaches there's some position coaches I will not be happy to lose but once you do that, this is how it works. You don't, you know, Jen Cohen or or Lincoln Ryan aren't going to say, okay, Jim Litter, come on in. But hey, but listen, we're, we're, we're going to keep Sean Nua. We're going to keep Dante Williams. We're, we're, you know, it's not like that. It's like, hey, uh, you know, I run this system. These are my guys. These guys know my system. We're coming in. These are my coaches. That's how it works. Yeah. So this move, yep. is it just going to be, you know, you guys think you just grab Alex Grinch and we're going to plug in uh, a defense coordinator. This is going to be wholesale change on the, on the uh, defensive staff. And, we do have some really, really good defensive um, prospects that we have commits that, you know, there's a chance we lose these guys. The flip side of that is, is we might also pull in some new guys. Um, as, a USC, uh, as a USC alum and as a Bosco alum, I've gone to all the Bosco games and, and Kingston and Villamuasa is, an, I, I can't begin to tell you how disappointed. There are, there are a number of Braves that should be wearing Cardinal and gold a year from now and two years from now that most likely because of what we're doing now, we probably just missed the boat on them. Uh, we do need to make that change and put them in a system where they feel that the, the biggest thing is, right? Everything is NIL. The biggest thing with these guys and their families is, can you get me to the NFL? Are you going to put me in a position that this is a business decision as well as it should be? When people go to college, you don't, you don't, you know, I mean, I went to USC. It was pretty much, I was dead set on going to USC from day one of my birth, right? But a lot of people, when you go to college, you say, what college is going to put me in the best position for me to make money going in the future? It's the same thing with these guys. These guys go to NFL college, right? They're looking for a career in NFL. They want to know, okay, if I go there, am I going to win? Am I going to get eyeballs on me? And am are you going to put me in the best position with coaching and scheme to get me to the NFL? And that, I think, is what has probably cost us some recruits so far. Winning cures that. But the fact that we're not winning and we're losing out on, the, on all these recruits uh, definitely is a problem. And again, this is probably one of the few last times we're going to be talking about this because this thing is done. It's just not, if it's going to happen is when it's going to happen. And as I said before, I don't take any pleasure in anyone ever losing their job, you know, whatsoever. Cause again, these yeah. are families, these are coaches and families and everything. You're going to up, you're going to uproot and move away. Um, but it has to be done. I mean, it's run yeah, its course. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's it. I mean, I think we, oh, we have, sorry, sorry we have, Will, Will ND, uh, you're here to commiserate. This could be, listen, this could be some family therapy for, you know, Irish. I, I have all the respect in the world for the Irish. I have all the respect for you. I, mean, I want to beat you guys left, right, and center. But, but I, I do, I do have respect for the Irish. Will, how are you doing tonight? If I said tonight one more time, I started to sound like the Uncle Lou show. How are you doing today? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm all right. I mean, I'm disappointed. Obviously, Irish. Irish season's pretty much over too. They, they wanted to get the the hope was to get the New Year's Six monkey off our back and win a New Year's Six bowl at least. But I was just gonna throw one name out there for a strength and conditioning coordinator for SD. So Matt Bayless was in South Bend for a while, but he left before the season started because like Marcus wanted to switch some things up with strength and conditioning. He and he was and he wasn't comfortable staying. And implementing those changes. So if USB gets him, that strength and conditioning program is just going to shoot right up. So I think, definitely think that's a name that Jen Cohen should look at to oh. be the new strength and conditioning coach at SB. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I, I, 
I, I appreciate that, Will. I, I do actually respect it. Will, uh, the, uh, you guys, Will does the post game, right? You're still doing the post game show for um, for Mark. Yeah. Uh, uh, you guys got to check that out. I mean, Trojans, I know this is er maybe early on the season before because we're going to have Notre Dame um, at home next year. And so you get the whole season to learn as much as you can about uh, Notre Dame, uh, checking out Will. Will's very knowledgeable, not just about N Notre Dame. Will Will's like a little walking encyclopedia. He's like basically junior. Um, Mark, Mark Rogers. He's like the junior version of Mark Rogers. So if you guys haven't checked out his stuff as well, um, make sure you're doing that. And while I'm handing it out also, earlier we were talking, you know, we've been talking about uh, Stanley T being out of position and we've been talking about some of the personnel issues and we've been talking about, uh, you know, Alex Grinch and he needs to go, et cetera. Uh, you guys, make sure you check it out, Trojan Blade. My buddy Gabe over there uh, right now, go check out his, uh, it's just about straight from the heart. He, he put out a video right after the game. Uh, got a lot of truth and knowledge in there. Uh, go check out the Trojan Blade because uh, that video last night had me fired up because I think he he nailed it. So make sure you're doing that. All right, Will, anything else for us? Uh, no, guys. I mean, you guys still have that UCLA game that's very winnable. So it's, the season's definitely not over. If you yeah. retain the victory bell, you get some, something out of the season. So definitely think that's a winnable game because they're about the same as Utah. And uh, – you guys almost beat Utah, so definitely a winnable game for SC. Yeah. Austin might be tough, but that's looking forward to the victory bell game for sure. No, I well, appreciate Will, you, Will, Will, you're going to fire a coordinator. We're going to fire a coordinator. It's going to be an interesting December. I don't know. I'm scared that Marcus isn't going to fire his friend after one year. I'm, I'm okay. nervous about it. But I mean, we'll if if Freeman doesn't fire Jared Parker, he's as unserious about winning as Lincoln Riley is by retaining Alex Grinch. And this is a little bit of a different situation. He was a stopgap. It's clear he was a stopgap. You, you, you know, when you when you lost Reese yeah, at the last minute, you know, it, you, what you had to just reach, and so you hired from within. It didn't work. It's a little easier to move on from a guy that was that was brought up, you know, from tight end coach to OC than it is when you bring somebody in or bring someone over. So I, I think that he had his year to prove himself and he had a lot of room to say, hey, we're going to move on. And of course, and of course, Will, as you know, I, mean, I, think, any team, offensive coordinator would, I think any offensive coordinator would want to work with this 2024 class. I mean, TJ Carr, Cam Williams, Peter and Young. So I definitely think we can get a good coordinator if we do fire Parker. Just hope it's the right fit. The other thing, of course, as you know, Will, is that Notre Dame needs to open up the checkbook uh, and be willing to pay some money. Like, hopefully yeah. everyone realizes how idiotic it was to not give top pay top dollar to Andy Ludwig to bring him in. Like, that was just a joke. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Will. Appreciate you calling as always. Thanks, guys. Uh, I'll call back after the show. Perfect. That's okay. No, absolutely. Sounds good. Thanks, Will. So you guys, uh, another one of the books, uh, Trojan Family Therapy. Uh, I'm sorry if we didn't get to your call. Oh, actually, I think we're good right now. Um, Matt, you got time for one more? Sure. We got one, one more. more in the queue. We got one more in the queue. Sorry. One more. Yep. All right. Hey, listen, I try to get to all you guys. I'm, I promise you guys, by the way, that I'm going to go with these calls faster. But um, thank you for calling. What's your name? And by the way, you guys, please don't call anymore, right? This is the last one in the queue. Uh, where are you calling from? What's your name? Hi, this is uh, Danny from Simi Valley. Hi, Danny. Thanks for calling in. Another first time caller. Appreciate it. Yes, uh, there is, the, my reason for calling is I'm peed off, not because of the loss, but because of some of these, uh, I'm trying to keep it clean here, uh, a-holes that were making fun of Caleb, Will <clears throat> yes. Caleb Williams crying on the sidelines. I will allow that comment for those they, people. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, and there's this one um, a-hole uh, who's claimed to be a coach um, uh, saying that they were soft and, and uh, a bunch of other uh, negative things. And I'm going, if that's if you're a coach, uh, I'm, I feel sorry for the uh, people that you coached. So um, that's my uh, thing is just, I'm just really, you know, because Caleb has been, um, I'm getting emotional here, sorry. But Caleb has carried this team on his shoulders this whole damn year. Yeah. And for him to be crying, I mean, he's, he's he bleeds USC. He bleeds USC. And to 
get to make fun of him crying because he, you know, he's he's played his heart out yeah. on this team, and for these <clears throat> for these a holes to, to to make fun of him, I just it just really makes me mad. Yeah, just really makes Amen. me mad. You know what? If Amen. if it's any right if it's any solace, yeah, we're, we're I think anyone that's a Trojan's right there. It, it was a, it was see I think earlier um it was Frank. You know, anybody's ever strapped on, oh no, it was LV. Anybody's ever strapped on, you know, pads or, or, or put on your uniform, gone out there and played and left it out there, and your heart out there and lost a game. Everyone can relate with Caleb and any player that becomes emotional. And I'm going to leave it with this. Was any solace to you? My dad told me a long time ago, when someone makes an asinine comment like that, it absolutely says way more about them than it does about you. And in this case, this A, I'll use exactly, your word exactly. for this guy, this A hole. I'll tell you right now, someone like that shows the world who they are and maybe their own, I know, insecurities when they can't understand raw and passion, raw emotion that's coming out of, of a human right. being. I, you, you almost, almost, I don't, he's an a-hole, almost want to feel sorry for them, but they clearly don't deserve it. So, you know what? Uh, great. Absolutely great call. Again, another first time caller knocks it out of the park. Really, I'm gl so glad I took your call. That was a great comment. Well, thank you. I love you guys. I always I watch you all the time, uh, either together or or you separately. Oh, well, I'm following Matt around all the time now, so don't worry. You'll see us pretty much together. <laughs> all right, Danny, you're, you're awesome. You. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Well, thank you, you guys too, and uh, look forward to uh, the next time. Absolutely. Well, you guys, that's going to wrap up another Trojan Family Therapy. Um, again, thank you to all the guys. You guys are the star of the show. This is a guarantee it won't be the last, but it definitely was the first caller-driven call-in show. This is 100% about the Trojan family and college football fans in general. This is where you sound off, you know, on um, if you're happy, if you're upset, if you got questions, come in, share them with us. We're, we're, we're so grateful that you guys came here and spent your Sunday morning with us. Um, but the callers, you guys, you guys are special to us. You are the reason why we're doing all of this. I uh, just want to thank again, Avery from Georgia, uh, Cam from Thousand Oaks, Frank from Arizona, Russ from San Diego, Dave from Iowa, Preston from Florida, Danny from Simi Valley. And am I leaving anyone off? I'm sure I am because I, you know, I get so caught up in these calls. I forget to write the name down, but I am trying to write down. Love you guys. Thank you so much for being here. We will make sure though, you're hitting that subscribe button down that corner by Matt. I can't point. So weird down that corner by Matt. Uh, it says subscribe. Hit that. Hit the notification bell. You'll know when we go live. Uh, and we look forward to talking to you guys. Remember, you guys, we are Trojans. We will fight on. There are still some Ws. I hear people saying we're going to lose the next two games. You know what? I'm telling you, we're going to find a way to win one of these games. And we might be good in basketball this season. Beat Kansas State. And there's rumors that Matt and I might be doing some basketball talk. So if you guys are interested in basketball, hit us up in the comments. Hit us up in the, in the comments right now. Uh, go ahead and hit us up in the chat as well if you guys want to see a basketball because we're going to have something special. You know, both men's and women. You got Juju Watkins, right? She She's going to be phenomenal for the women of Troy. Um, if you guys don't get out to watch games this year at Galen, uh, you know, you're going to miss out on Collier. You're going you're gonna to miss out on a lot. So uh, make sure you guys are coming. We have the, the number one men's, number one women's prospects in the country. We're ranked number two in the preseason. Uh, uh, by the media for the ahead of the Bruins, by the way, uh, in the media yeah. poll for to, for the Pac-12 championship, this team is special. And remember, first in basketball, time ever, first time ever, USC men's basketball and women's basketball are both in the preseason AP top twenty-five. First time ever, ever. So we will be bringing it. We are both, you know, football and basketball fans, and uh, we will be we will bring it to you guys. So I'll leave you this last thought also. You know, so we lost this game. But don't let, uh, don't let all this outside noise tell you. We are still USC. We are four, now 46-41-1 and one against top five teams. That is number one all time. Let me say that again to anybody out there that's not a USC Trojan, and especially for USC Trojans. USC is now 46-41-1 and one all time against schools in an AP top five. Okay? No other team in college football has above a 500 record and we're still sitting five games above 500. So that is USC. We are the Trojan family. Thank you all for being here and make sure that you check us out. We will have that basketball show coming up. 
Uh, love you guys. Thank you for being here. And everyone, as always, got to fight on.